Isang magandang Miyerkules sa inyong lahat. Ito po ang December 15, 2021 edition ng The Stock Market Today. Kalagit na na po ng Disyembre. And 10 days to go na lang. Christmas na. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Benji Chidoro. Ako po ay isang retired bank officer na nagsimula mag-invest sa Philippine Stock Market noong 2007. And I do this report every day which I started August of last year. I also report the latest news on your favorite and most active stocks. If you like the content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. If you have stocks in mind that you want reviewed, please comment on the comment box and I will prioritize. Ang ating financial news ay tungkol sa NLEX Connector Road. Kasama po ang ating financial headlines at ang resulta ng trading sa ating PSE ngayong araw, December 15, 2021. Wednesday, dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. Okay, well, let's start. Okay, let's start with our financial headlines, and this is courtesy of uh, BDO Securities Macro News, ano? DBCC. That's uh, the Development Budget Coordination Committee sees faster 2021 GDP growth, and then we have ADB raises Philippine GDP growth forecast for 2021 and in our sectoral news NLEX signs agreement with CRBC that's the China Road and Bridge Corporation for connector road projects government tops OECD scheme for renewable energy but our main news is this NLEX connector road no? which is um, MPI MPI is the holding company at maganda po yung mga roads ng NLEX ano? kasi po noong um, November um, yung long weekend ng November yung last days ng November ay nagbagyo po kami and maganda yung roads niya up to um, Santa Santa Ines I can't, I can't recall anymore tapos may nagko-connect dun sa T-Plex yung T-Plex Hanggang ano po yan? Hanggang Rosario, La Union, I believe, you know? But uh, since we took Cannon Road, kasi nagbukas po yung Cannon Road for tourists, uh, pataas, paakyat one way ang Cannon Road nung papunta kami, we exited season. But there are parts in um, along T-Plex na hindi siya smooth. Matulin pa rin yung takbo namin. Actually, hindi pa ako nagpapatakbo ng 100 doon eh. Kasi 100 po yung limit. Hanggang 85 lang po tayo. And may mga portions doon na medyo hindi smooth yung ride. Yung medyo nag-bounce nag, uh, yung vehicle. Ano? Slight bounce. And I think those, those portions need to be um, maintained. Ano? But The roads are very, very nice and you can save a lot of uh, money, no? gasoline, by using T-Plex and the NLEX. Anyway, ito po yung topic natin, NLEX. In fact, tinayin po namin yung, yung trip, ano? kasi I'm coming from Paranaque. So we took uh, the um, Skyway, di ba? That's yung connector road ng San Miguel up to North Expressway po yun, baba nyo yung North Expressway na po and then T-Plex, then Season, then going to Baguio MacArthur, then going to Baguio siguro yung yung, yung kwa namin yung paakyat namin was about 4 hours and 15 minutes kung walang stops ha? hanggang Baguio na po yun Baguio City na po Up to the lion's head, 4 hours, 15 minutes. Anyway, ito po yung ating uh, main news for the day. NLEX Corp partners with Chinese firm for second section of connector project. NLEX Corp on Tuesday said it recently signed an agreement with China Road and Bridges Corp 
for the Civil Lorex contract of the remaining 3 kilometers of its connector project in Manila. The project is between the future España and Santa Mesa, so 3 kilometers Puyon. The second section of the 8 kilometer North Luzon Expressway Connector Road. So yung first section is from C5 or C3 up to Blooming 3 or up to Espana. No? In an email statement, the company said the construction of the remaining 3 kilometers of the NLEX connector project is now underway. The entire NLEX connector extends expressway southward from the NLEX Harbor Link Caloocan Interchange, 5th Avenue C3 Road, passing through Espana Boulevard. R Magsaysay Boulevard and eventually connecting to the Skyway Stage 3 within the vicinity of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines in Santa Mesa, Manila. The first section of the project is from, from Caloacan Interchange to Espana Boulevard. Tingnan po natin yun. Meron po kong nakuhang uh, ito po. So the first section is from C3 to Espana. Ito po yung 5 km. And your sec second section is 3 km no? from Espana to Santa Mesa. Nakikita nyo ba? Ito, Espana to Santa Mesa. Yung first, ito yung first um, section. So 8 km po ang total nyan. And then let's continue. The first section is from Caloocan to Espana is scheduled to be completed in the second half of 2022. Now 60% done, the company said. We are committed to provide the necessary right-of-way for this project as we target to complete the segment by the end of 2022. Actually, there is uh, uh, just a few right-of-way problems here, I would suppose. Kasi release ng trend po yung dinadaanan. Wala pong right-of-way issue. Yun. It's owned by the government. Eh. At uh, madaling palisin lang yung mga whatever, kung merong um, informal settlers doon, ay pwede pong mad madaling mapaalis. Ano? Eh, unlike yung nangyari sa San Miguel na maraming right of waste project that they have to use the San Juan River to um, avoid some right of waste issues. Ano? The project, which is expected to accommodate around 35,000 motorists, is seen to decongest local roads as it aims to divert cargo trucks to the elevated expressway. Without a truck ban, the road will be available 24-7 according to the company. So, wala pa lang truck ban yung Skyway uh, Connector Road. No? Upon completion, the NLEX connector will enable Manila ports to have seamless north-south connection and provide further convenience to motorists with the decongestion of major thoroughfares like EDSA and C5, Mr. Mercado noted. For his part, MPTC President and Chief Executive Officer Rodrigo E. Franco said that the Metro Pacific Group actively contributes to accelerating infrastructure development in the Philippines. Mr. Franco also expects the project to enhance accessibility to international airports such as the Naia and the Clark International Airport. So, ito po yun, ano? Ito po yung nakuha kong um, I am picture or drawing from the DPWH um, website. So, ito po yung first phase. Actually, meron na po ito eh, yung sa may uh, blooming treat. Kasi dumadaan, release ng trend po ito. Most of it are, uh, is uh, along the PNR railways, no? PNR rails, no? So, yan po yung kanyang ano, plano, which will eventually connect to the Skyway Stage 3. Dito po yung connection niya. So, yung C3, ito po yung 5th Avenue sa Caloocan. Pagkalagpas mo ng A. Bonifacio, which is this road, yan na po yung Sergeant Esguera. Ito po yung existing Skyway, no? Skyway Connector. North-South connection. Yan po. Yan po siya dumadaan. So, if this is completed, there will be two interchanges along Espana. One in Expan Espana and another in Quezon Avenue which will connect to the um, Enlex Connector Road. So, madadali na po, no? At madidecongest na po yung traffic in major thoroughfares in Metro Manila. Okay. So, before we get to the Philippine Stock Exchange and the Philippine Stock Exchange Index, let me read some comments from our dear subscribers. 
Okay po, from George Kuang. Sabi niya, thank you po, sir, for taking time in reviewing MPI and RLC. More power to your channel. Thank you very much, George, for your support of this channel. No? And then we have a new subscriber, si Meme. Meme di Kambing. Wow, ang ganda ng pangalan niya. Or this is just a call sign siguro. So, yan po. At, um... Let's now go to the Philippine Stock Exchange and the Philippine Stock Exchange Index and how it fared today. Okay, the PSEI lost 109.41 points. Let's put up our indicators first. Or 1.51% to finish at 7132.58. So you think closing price is lower than our 50-day exponential moving average, but it's still holding, no? Yung 100-day yung ating support dyan sa 7,047. And yung ating 20-day and 50-day exponential is piercing through the candlesticks. So, an indication that it is moving sideways for the past 5 days. So, sa market summary naman, I 142 companies declined, 58 advanced, while 54 remained unchanged. The all share index was also in the red, 1.54% down. All our sectoral indices are down, led by properties at 2.34%. And then, your market status will be taking a look at the top six stocks. So, let's review Monde, Tel, then pasok natin si MPI, and then si MRIT, and then si ASEN, and SGP. So, yun po ang re review natin today. And so, let's start with Monde. Okay, Monde lost 50 centavos, 15.60 po. And bearish po yung kanyang sentiment. RSI is bearish at 34. Pagka umabot po yan ng 30, oversold na po yung stock. Yan po yung uh, indicator, RSI indicator po natin. Nasa 34 po, bearish po yung sentiment. Just uh, as in the previous days, yung ating support ni Monde ay nandito po sa area nito. Nasa 1550 to 1540 po yung support ni Monde. Yan po, so 1550 to 1540 po. But now, when I talk of support and resistance, these are not exact points, but these are areas. And then, tell naman, yan, bullish pa rin si tell, although it had two successive red candlesticks, but our indicators are still under the candlestick. All of it, yung 20, 50, and 100 day exponential moving average indicating a bullish trend in spite of two red candlesticks in the past two days. So, yung kanyang RSI is still bullish at 56. Meantime, yung kanyang resistance, nandito po sa area to, nasa 1758 to 1760 yung kanyang resistance na nakikita natin. While support, let's take EMA50 at uh, 16 52. Yun po yung ating support level kasi nakakakita po tayo ng rejection at this level. Oh. Diyan po. Or at that area. So after TEL ay Metro Pacific naman po tayo. Maraming pong project si Metro Pacific. Pero napaka mabagal ang movement niya. And we don't know when the stock will, will actually soar, no? Kasi kung talagang ganito, kasi naobserbahan ko po yung stock na sa high of uh, 4 pesos 10 centavos, tapos nagdi-dip siya sa 380. So kung i-calculate nyo po, pwede nyo i-calculate yung risk-reward ratio or risk-reward po nyan kung kikita po kayo sa ganyan. Kasi po in the past uh, months, no starting November, ganun po ang kanyang movement. Yan po, uh, dito, October 13. So, 3 months na pong ganyan yung movement ni Metro Pacific. Kaya, 
kung kayo'y magta-trade ng Metro Pacific ay i-observe nyo lang yung highs niya at saka lows niya at saka dun, dun ko kayo mag-sell at mag-buy or mag-buy at mag-sell okay so yung kanyang support nandito po sa area ng to yan nasa 380 yung kanyang support level or within that area yung resistance nandito po sa area ng to nasa 411 to 415 po ang kanyang resistance level so yung range niya no so that's um, 30 centavos yung kanyang movement tingnan niyo po kung makaka earn kayo ng profit if you sell in this level and buy in this level okay po and then after MPI I am read tingnan na natin ang read ano mag good news tayo ng konti Yan, MRIT. Okay, so our indicator is still above the candlestick, although this is just the 20 day, you know. So, lumalabas na po yung 50 day dito at meron pong volume dito. Actually, flat po, flattish, more of a flattish um, movement yung stock. Kasi po, hanggang dyan lang po siya. 1872, no? Or 1842 yung pinaka-resistance po niya. And yung pinaka-support po niya ay nandito po sa level na ito. Yan, nasa 1803, no? In fact, yung EMA50, pwede pong support level po yan. But it's too narrow or too thin yung information na nakukuha natin sa MREIT. Okay. And then, ASEN, another Ayala company. Asens bearish. Okay? So, eto, nakita po natin na dito bullish po siya, no? Kasi pataas under the candlestick po, eh. Pero, nung dahan-dahan po siyang nagko-cross over. So, na nakikita nyo po itong orange line na ito ay dahan-dahan pong nagko-cross until pagdating dito, starting November 26, nag-cross na po siya. Tapos, the medium term also followed suit at nag-cross po siya dito ng December 3. And right now, there is a crossover or yung sabi ng mga traders, ito daw yung death cross. Uh, crossover between the 20-day and the 50-day exponential. Ibig sabihin po, in the short and medium term, ay bearish na po yung stock. At mako-confirm po natin yan sa RSI dahil 38 po yung RSI, meaning it's a bearish number na po. And makikita nyo po yung long term indicator sa pagkatagal-tagal na panahon ay nasa ilalim siya. Ngayon po ay about to cross or has crossed over our candlesticks already. Okay po. So yan po ang kwento ni ASEN. So bearish sentiment on the short and medium term at maaring on the long term ay bearish na po itong stock na ito. Although, marami po siyang fundamentally, ha? marami po siyang projects at magaganda naman po naman. So, maaring temporary lang po ito. Not the technical is saying otherwise. So, yung support niya, nandito po sa area to. Actually, EMA 100 po yung support. Eh. So, nasa 1032. Pero, linearly, you pl I plotted it at 1030. So, within that area po. Ngayon, yung resistance ay nandito po sa level na ito nasa 10, uh, 1240 tingnan nga natin yung SNR ni uh, Investa ok so medyo close no so resistance medyo mababa ng konti but the support is also mababa ng konti no? so basic yung mababa ng konti siya so basically yun po ang aking assessment for the stock na ASEN Finally, we have SGP. How is it faring? Yan. Naku. Tingnan natin yung 3-minute chart. I can't see too much here. Eh. So, bearish pa rin yung, yung movement ni SGP. Oh. Kasi pababa siya. Eh. So, right now, flattish pa rin yung tingin ko dito. But uh, the movement actually based on the one day is bearish. 
So kasama na rin po yung, I think this is more than 20 days already, November 10 to December 15. So yung average na po ito ay more or less the the bearish the level of 20 day is on the short term bearish no so yung ating RSI mababa no nasa 13 meaning mababang mababa po yung RSI na oversold po yung stock okay po but from the daily candlestick hindi po natin ma predict pero based on a 3 minute chart ay pababa po yung kanyang movement. Okay, yan po ang ating report sa stock market. December 15, 2021, bukas po ay simbang gabi, simula ng Pasko, sabi ni Lucio San Pedro. Ito po si Benji Chadara, nagpapaalala, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagtangkilik hanggang sa muli. Stay safe. God bless. Bye for now.